great morning out there. Welcome to another live broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. I want to specially welcome everyone joining us this morning, wherever you're connecting or joining us from. You are much welcome this morning to another live broadcast. Well, this is the Potter's Gate where we engage with the heart of God. We communicate with each other in the spirit. We share and look into God's word and allow the spirit of God to take us deeper into his emphasis, particularly for the days that we live in. We live in a, such an interesting day and the spirit of God is taking us even deeper into how to live our life and how to prepare ourselves regarding the nature of uh, the seasons we have been brought into. As we continue to make our way further into the future, the Spirit of God has continued to engage us by changing you know, our garments, our concept of uh, our perspective and, 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 and lifestyle. The Lord is bringing us to a better position where we can stand for Him and understand all right, how to engage. But more so, the Lord wants us to have a better insight, a better revelation, a better intimate understanding of who he is so that in that concept of that personal experiential knowledge we have of him we can then face whatever is out there or whatever will be coming our way so our concept and, and, and direction for the past couple of months now has been to go back to God to know him to understand his ways to do his bidding all right, so so we pray and we believe in the Lord that He will continue to open our eyes and and give us the grace and wisdom and the understanding. All right, that we all need to be able to represent Him. All right, in in the in the light of this brand new day, the things of God are are, are happening. Or excuse me, are being unveiled to us in various ways, and I'm I'm happy that the Spirit of God, all right, will just uh, continue to allow us to 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 you know to to journey further and understand what this what He. Is demanding for this brand new day so thank you so much thank you brother derek uh, i see somebody else joining i have not seen your face thank you so much everyone for connecting wherever you're connecting from this morning it's a privilege to have you this morning join us excuse me <coughs> oh hallelujah thank you father we bless your name lord amen oh well uh, we're gonna of course continue i just sense in my spirit this morning that we need to continue to look into uh, the concept of, you know, learning by heart, growing and maturing in the things of the spirit. That's what we're going to be doing again. All right. Yesterday. Wow. What a time. What what a what an impartation. What 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 an engagement with the spirit of God yesterday morning. I tell you, you need to go back and listen to, you know, the the the, the, the yesterday's uh, broadcast if you have not listened to it you need to listen to it because I, I like to encourage us that it's not just enough for us to be part of okay what we are you know seeing okay we join the, the broadcast and we listen and we enjoy it but you see you, we're gonna miss a lot of things if we don't go back to what has been proclaimed what has been declared so I'm, I'm actually thinking within my own spirit that maybe you know uh, sometimes next maybe from next week we kind of give a, a day off and you know, so we people can go back and listen or right, and listen because until that word like we say until those words that we are hearing you know find root in our in our hearts the word are not going to work so uh, accumulation of knowledge is important but just accumulation of the knowledge without amen the word the, the spirit of the word being rooted in our spirit is not really going to make any difference in our life so i'm very conscious of that and you know as 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 as, as a as a teacher of god's word you know as as a teaching priest it's my it's my desire of okay to see that at least those who are serious with what we are talking about will take the time to to root those words in their heart to root those words there the bible says the farmer went to plant when you plant you just you don't just spread the seed you've got to you know prepare the ground and allow the seed amen to take root and to take residence that's important all right so we want to do that we want to believe god that he will grant us some you know uh, uh, wisdom in how to you know put the word to work in our in our own you know individual life because the word of god doesn't just go into work the moment you hear it the bible says in fact the bible says even the moment you know the the the, the the sower goes to seed. So the seed, the enemy also goes to walk. He goes to want to get the seed. So we have to kind of, you know, uh, uh, develop a new sense of, you know, uh, uh, responsibility and commitment to the things that we are hearing. The things that we are hearing have the power, all right, to bring a change, to bring tr transformation, to bring healing, to bring deliverance. But beyond that, to take us to, all right, the place that you know we've been invited to. 
because that's the essence of uh, you know the teachings that we're doing and this engagement that we're having every morning is to bring us to a place in God is to bring us to a, a position where we can have a better contact a better interaction a better understanding if you will a better relationship with the father that is the first and the most you know important thing that we want to understand and we are pressing to us all right we want to know him first I'm just looking at that scripture again. I'm going to go to that scripture this morning in uh, 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 in Daniel chapter 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 nine verse you know verse thirty two. All right, we're going to look into that scripture. Those who know their God, but I want us to look at it in in a context. All right, because it's easy to say those who know their God shall be strong. And they will do exploit but that word amen was proclaimed and declared within the context and the context is very important so we're gonna come back there but before we do all of that uh, uh let us pray let us pray father we honor you this day before we do anything yes we know that we've prayed we have prepared our heart i've prayed i've waited on you to bring me to this point where we can speak and express your heart again but once again as a community as a as a platform lord we want to once again corporately ask you, Father, to help us via the authority of your spirit to bring us to the place where once again we can be established in this present truth that you are unveiling. This is the day where you are revealing your word to us anew, afresh. Every season, yes, you reveal yourself to us in a different light, in a different dimension. Based on your prophetic program for that season, you reveal yourself to us. Lord, we cannot, you know, depend on the revelation of years past to address issues that are panning out before our days. So, Father, this morning, once again, we have come to you, the bread of life. We have come to you, the fountain of life. We have come to you, our King and our Lord. Once again, open our eyes of understanding. Illuminate us. Bring us to a place where we can see with clarity, where we can have understanding, oh God, of your heart, of your mind. Help us to see. And without faith, we cannot see. Without trust and obedience to your voice, we cannot come to the place of greater sight. Yes, the day is dawning again. We thank you, Father. We wait on you. We journey further, oh God, to the place of the brightness, to the place of illumination, to the place, oh God, where we are illuminated. You are the illuminated one. Illuminate us. Transform us via the power of your light. Jesus, you are the light of the world. The world begins with us. The world begins with us. <clears throat> so we pray this morning that as you continue to engage us, we will become even more, yes, illuminated. You are the illuminous. Bring us to the place of your divine pleasure. But we can only follow when we see the light. He said, if you claim that the light you have in you, if the darkness in you, rather, is light, you say, how great is the darkness? So, Father, we... Re remove every form of distractions and ignorance yes it is ignorance that tells us that we have light why you look at the light and you say now i see darkness so we pray this morning lord as we come humbly we humble we humble ourselves we humble ourselves we humble ourselves another not the humility that def that reflects pride but the humility that is evident before you that indeed We've been broken because to say we are humble is to indeed embrace brokenness so this morning as we come we pray that once again you will lead us take us by hand and lead us to your place of speakings and demand and requirements thank you father thank you for your ways thank you for your will thank you for your desire thank you for your intention thank you lord that nothing will be able to hinder or frustrate what you have begun to say and proclaim and declare even in this generation yes father we continue to engage with every spirit with every power with systems that have been positioned to frustrate and hinder the advancement of your will in the earth no your word declares that the kingdom of god is coming your word says we must pray that your kingdom come and that your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven that is our prayer this morning 
May your kingdom come into every sphere of human life, into every dimension of our existence. May your kingdom come into our home, into our family, into our, into our community. May your kingdom come, Lord, into, yes, Father, the, the, the operations of government. May your kingdom come, Lord, into, yes, those who position themselves as gatekeepers in the world of media. May your kingdom come, Lord, yes, Father. May your kingdom come into the UN. May your kingdom come into the AU. May your kingdom come into the continent of Africa. May your kingdom come lord into the space of every leader every every president yes every king every emir in the name of jesus may your kingdom come into the heart of the of the others yes yes and the obese of this world may your kingdom come in the name of jesus into every heart of a chief into their homes may your kingdom come lord we take authority and we proclaim and declare that where your spirit is there is liberty this morning we father we declare that your liberty is being expressed as the voice oh god of your counsel goes forth we declare, Lord, that your liberty, your authority is being established. So we thank you. We bless your holy name. That the things that we proclaim are the things that are bringing liberty, deliverance, and healing, restoration, transformation. Yes, Father, to communities, to cities, to nation. We thank you once again this morning that we can see through the eyes of the Spirit. And we can proclaim these things. We bless your holy name this morning. Have your way. Take your place. Have your way. Have your way. Reign in us. Reign through us this morning. Use us for your glory. Have your way through my life, O oh God. Let the things that I proclaim this day, O oh God, be the extreme extension of your domain of your kingdom we thank you we bless your holy name we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name we glorify you hallelujah have your way we wait on you we trust in you thank you father thank you lord that our strength this morning is renewed to pursue you to seek you in jesus name amen all right like I said, we are going to continue to engage this principle of learning by heart. As we know that you know, for a long time, we have learned a lot of things about, about God. Like I said, we've learned a lot of things about God, about his ways, about you know, his, his desire, his dealings. And we have those knowledge stored up in our minds somewhere there. But deep within the recess of our spirit man, we have not really you know, engaged we have not touched, we have not come into that position where we can begin to experience the things that we have learned. Why? Because there are still areas in our soul realm that are blocked or right, that have hindered, that have put aside the things that the soul does not agree with. So one of the things we know the Spirit of God is doing in this season in time, all right? of course, that's been happening for a couple of you know, years now. The Spirit of God has been engaging the, the faculties of our, of our soul. Because once the soul finally yields and surrender to the authority of the will of God, all right, it's important that we know that what begins to happen is uh, we, we begin to win in every area of life. All right? One of the things that we are seeing is the division. The division in us has hindered us and has continued to stop us from receiving, from benefiting from all of the things that the Father has desired and ordained for us. So we want to really bring our soul amen, in compliance to the authority of God's word. We want our soul to come in agreement to the standard of God, to the will of God. All right? We cannot deal with these things by, you know, just, you know, one of the things that I see is that we try to understand the things of God. We try to interact with the things of God via our, you know, human, you know, our faculty, our minds. And, and the mind will always, you know, in its intelligence, will always tell us, no, no, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't befit you. That is not right. That, that cannot be God. So we're forever questioning. We're forever debating. We're forever challenging. All right. And we already see that happening today. Right? We find a lot of very intellectual, highly educated people challenging the standards of God. This is why, like I said some time back, in fact, I think I even mentioned it yesterday, this is why some people are beginning to change some narratives in, in the scripture. They say, well, that cannot be what God is saying. So they are removing it and they are replacing those words and they're trying to, you know, make the word fit their own narrative, you know, suit them. Yet, you know, you still hear God says, Abraham, wake up in the morning, take your son, your only son, and go to the land of, of, of Moriah. 
All right. And, and in one of the mountains, I'm going to show you that there, I want you to sacrifice this, this gift that you have waited for, this son that you have, you've depended on, you've been praying all your prayer and fasting for the past 25 years, all your intercession and all of these things that you, finally, this thing that I've given to you, I want you to bring him to the place of sacrifice until God has all of us. Whatever we give to God will not suffice. What God is saying to Abraham is, I want all of you. I don't just want the things you've done for me. I want you. Isaac was Abraham laid on the altar because Isaac was what Abraham lived for. At least back in those days, the idea, the philosophy of back in those days that if, you, if you're some king, you're some very powerful, you know, rich person, but you don't have a son to take over all right, your, 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 your possessions and your estate, you're nothing. That was, the, that was the frame of mind. So everybody does everything to get a son. And, and, and if you've got a, a girl, they don't want, you know. <laughs> no matter how powerful, no matter how wealthy, no matter how educated um, your, 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 your baby girl is. No, they don't. They want a son. So God was challenging, amen, the value system of the day. Take your son. Can I be your exceeding great reward? Can I, God, be your exceeding great reward, Abraham? That's why we, Abraham was given the title, the father of faith. He lived in that position where he, man, he knew God. And that's the place God, amen, the father is calling us into in this day where there are so many things that have defined the narrative of our spirituality, of our Christianity, amen, of our sense of commitment to the things of God. But there are things that we have decided not to, you know, uh, talk about. But those are the things that God is talking about. Those are the things that God is dealing with. Those are the things that heaven, amen, is pointing at. He will touch our mental understanding. He will touch our philosophy. He will touch our uh, intellectual capacity. He will touch, amen, every Every sense of our, you know, excellence and, you know, whatever it is that we are pursuing, if it's not God, those things will be touched. So we need to understand that, you know, what begins humanity are the same very thing that is going to, you know, begin to wrap up, amen, the day of man on earth. As we begin to finish this dimension of millennium and begin to prepare ourselves to enter into millennium, into a new millennium where Christ will reign. We have to begin to look into, amen, the reality of how committed we are, amen, to the things of God. And of course, we can only do that when we have engaged God, when we have met with him on the Mount of Transfiguration, when we have moved, amen, from Sinai to Zion, like he spoke to us yesterday. All right? Our position on the mountain will give us the ability and capacity, amen, to face all other mountains. Remember, the Bible says in the book of you know, Isaiah chapter 2, amen, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted, be the established and be exalted above every other mountains. One of those mountains that are being exalted, amen, is the mountains of the Antichrist, all right? The man of sin, yes, they are rising, all right? But if you are not established on the mountain of the Lord's house, those mountains are going to do a few. So it, it's, it's imperative that we understand that what the Spirit of God is demanding of us right now is, Isaiah, bring my people to the place where they get to know me. I don't just want you to tell them about me. I don't just want you to preach to them. No, my preaching and my proclamation and declaration is an invitation for you to encounter him. And so should be every, every person out there representing God, preaching and teaching. All right? well, our message should not be to just excite people and to psych people up and to make people feel like, no, it's to bring them. The answer, the, the mission of every man of God is to bring the people all right, to Christ. He said, until they come to the full statue, until they come to the perfect day, we're going to be looking into that scripture again. So the Spirit of God is engaging us, is speaking to us, and I really want us, amen, to begin to make that transition, amen, from the faculties of, you know, our, our mind in terms of understanding the things of God, amen, to, amen, the position of the Spirit. We must become people of the Spirit, meaning that how we live our life has to be factor, has to be engaged, has to be designed, amen, via the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He must be the one leading us, bringing us to the place where we can see 
and see clearly, all right? We don't want to see and see, you know, men walking like trees and, and living our life in, in deceit and delusion. We want to have, amen, what is called the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to have a personal encounter. We want to have a first-hand, amen. I mean, the people who put this scripture down, all right? The Bible says they were first witness. They were witness. They were witness. And then the Holy Spirit, amen, steered their heart. They were moved as the Spirit steered their heart. And they wrote down the things that they witnessed, the things that they saw. When Luke was given, a, 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 you know, Theophilus, the account, the account of what he saw. I mean, it is said to Theophilus, these are the accounts, these are the things that I witnessed. You cannot speak or write about the things of God if you have not witnessed, if you have not, you know, encountered him. What would you be, what would you be talking about? So the, the, this is the challenge before us, amen. And remember, friends, this is a message to this generation. We're not just speaking to one person or group, amen. We're speaking to a generation. This is what is, this is the prophetic mind of God for this season, for this generation. A people must come and experience God, amen. That's why the Bible says, one shall put a fall a thousand, two shall put a fall ten thousand, amen. Have you noticed that once we have this personal encounter with God, we become, amen, we, we, we we are, we are translated to the position of the majority in the things of God. Amen. Number is not majority. <laughs> the things of God, amen, is defined by encounter. All right. If you're on the position of encounter, you're on the, you're on the, you're on the side of majority. Guess what? It was just Elijah alone on Mount Carmel, amen, facing, you know, all this false prophets of Baal, amen, and all of these, you know, uh, people who don't even know where, I mean, he, he asked the people, choose this day where, where, whom you're going to serve. Make up your mind. The people could not choose because they have been captured, amen, by a false spirit called Jezebel in the land. When people are under the spell of Jezebel, they don't even know, amen, if they should choose the side of God because the side of God they can't see. When there's a spell, when there is a powerful delusion, illusion, amen, that has captured the heart of people. It's, it's difficult for people to go to church and even begin to in, in, interact with what they want. They don't even know what they want. That's why we, we, they give them excitement. They give them excitement. They give them some nice music. They give them, you know, nice preaching, you know, motivation. But guess what? On Monday, they still face reality. They still bow down to Jezebel. They still bow down, amen, to, you know, to, to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Because they have not met with God. They have not encountered him. Have you noticed that the encounter, amen, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and the experience of, of great men, people like, you know, Moses, amen, finally turned him to go back to Egypt and face one of the greatest empire, one of the greatest, you know, kings, uh, uh, you know, of, of, of his day. Because he met with God, he, he can face, he, he can go back, he can turn. Hallelujah. This was a man who had run for 40 years. I mean, he ran from Pharaoh. 40 years ago, Moses ran from Pharaoh. 40 years later, after he had encountered God, he ran back to Pharaoh. Let my people go. That's what I'm talking about. If we don't have an encounter with God, we, will, we don't have hope for, for the future. You may psych yourself up. No, no, no. I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. You may do all the positive confession if you have not seen him. If God has not been revealed to you, if you have not encountered him at the backside of the wilderness, it's only a matter of time before you capitulate, before you bow, before you give in, before you surrender, before you yield your soul, amen, before you compromise. It's only a matter of time. And I see a lot of people, God help me, I see a lot of people, all right, that they are potential compromisers. Why? Because we can see from how they, they are interacting and relating to things in this day. And, and I'm not trying to be funny, but that is just a reality. And I think that's why God is saying, hey, and, I, I'm not sh and I'm sure I'm not the only one God is quickening this message into. You see, this is a two-edged sword. As I'm proclaiming it, I'm also declaring it to myself. So this is not just something that, oh, this guy just making noise. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. God wants us to have a personal encounter with him because it's from there that we are able to begin to engage the, 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 the evils of our day. What would you be talking about? Moses said, you, you're sending me to this guy. Who, who would I say sent me? What backbone do I have? I mean, he had encountered God. But God said, go. He said, no, I'm not going. <laughs> who would I say? I need, I need to have a concrete evidence. I need to know the person who sent me. 
God said, tell him, I am that I am sent you. Are we ready for that, friends? As Moses was sent, so must all of us be sent. All of us must be sent from the position, amen, of our personal encounter with him. So if all we have, amen, is just a nice time to pray, if our prayer is not bringing us further, closer, amen, deeper into knowing him, then we have not stopped praying. <laughs> if all we are fasting, all right, is just to get something from God, just to, and listen to this, because he's a father, he will give you all of those things, but you still do not know him. So you can have many things, benefits, you know, of being a Christian, but you do not have a personal encounter with it. When you face things where the enemy comes, start to take those things from you. Because the enemy is going to come and start challenging with it. even the things God gives to you. If you don't have an encounter, how do you defend yourself? How do you defend those things? You see the point that I'm making? That's why I'm saying our prayer has to begin to change. We have to be, you know, fine-tuned again. Our prayer, our desire, our heart has to be reconfigured again. All right? They have to reset us. Amen? Reset us. To, you know, what seekest thou? What are you looking for? What are you, <laughs> why are you here? Why are you following me? You see, when you know that the, the ultimate of your heart desire is to encounter him, you will stay there. You know, <laughs> Moses was invited <laughs> in the cloud. God was, God was, God, God invited him. I mean, Moses was waiting first, first day, second day, God, God did not appear. He waited 40 days. Finally, he came down amidst the cloud. If you, if you know what you're looking for, you, you don't mind. Time, time is not an issue when you know what you're searching for. You see, when you, are when you want to encounter God, who cares? You throw the time away. You continue because, you know, one encounter can change a lifetime. Just to have a glimpse of his glory. Just to have an encounter with him. Ah, you can, you can move mountains. You see, the reason why we have chipping down Christianity to arguments and all of these crazy things that is going on is because people, people, no, longer, people no longer know God. They, in fact, they have never known God. They don't know the God they are talking about. They know the God that their pastor is preaching. They know the God that the apostle has preached. They know the God that the prophet has talked about. They know the God, you know, of they know the God of Elijah. They know the God of Moses. They know the God of, you know, of Paul. They know they, they they've they've learned about all, but they have not encountered that God for themselves. It's from what we have that we can offer. It's from what Amen has been deposited in you, Amen, that you can do ministry. Are you getting this, friends? The scripture must come alive. If you're going to be a man, a representative of God in this last day, because the, the line has been divided already. Those who know their God, maybe and those who know about him, those who don't know him at all, I mean, those ones are already gone. They, they, the devil is taking, is using them, playing. They, they are the one that he, the devil sent to us. Those people who, who don't know God, they are the one the devil sent to us. And they tell you they are Christian, but they will challenge you. And you also, you'll be arguing with them. You'll be arguing with them. You'll be arguing scripture. Who argues scripture? No. Can you part the Red Sea? <laughs> when you throw down your rod, can you turn to, can you turn, can you turn to snake? You say, well, 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 we can do that. Uh, but guess what? Egypt can also do that. But can your rod swallow, yes, the serpents of the magicians of Egypt? The days would, we are entering are days of power encounter. There will be clash of powers, clash of the titans, the clash of the kingdoms. Oh, you better be sure you're on the right side, friends. You better be sure that you're not psyching yourself up <laughs> about the things of God. You better be certain that what you're doing comes from a position of a personal revelation. It's important because you'll be tested. I will be tested. I'm not preaching to you. This is, this is the demand of the day we live in. This is what is required, amen, in the seasons that we have entered. How much of him do we know? And even in that encounter, we can encounter him in a little, just a little droplet. And you get satisfied with that, you run with that, that's also dangerous. 
You want to know more. You want to have a better. You see, don't let the introduction they give to you about God, it may suffice. No, it's not. It's not. You want to see. He said, my father's house, there are many mansions. That mansion, amen, is symbolic. He was speaking, amen, in a, in a parable. He was using parable to speak to his people. You think he went there to build a mansion? <laughs> Do you think it's a mansion he went to build? I'm going to my mansion in heaven. Oh, my Lord. Imagine God building. <laughs> no, the mansions are a reflection of the various dimensions. That we are going to encounter in the Father. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. The place we are going to live in heaven is, is in God. Heaven is God. Heaven lives in him. Then the Bible says he fills all things. All things consist in him. Is that not what the, it's not what the scripture says. <laughs> You see, that's why uh, how we interpret the scripture in this season. You, you, if, if you think you're psyching, oh, I'm going to go to heaven. Finally, I'm going to leave this evil world. I'm going to go to heaven. And all the image of heaven that in Hollywood has painted for you. A city of gold. You know, the streets made of transparent glass and all of that. All of that are in the Father. He is before all things. So, before you begin to think of a place that you're going to rest, you better begin to understand that he is your rest. That revelation, amen, of Sabbath is, is a person. You see, when we begin to magnify our understanding regarding who he is, ah, they will begin to bring us further to understand and to see the things we have not encountered. Let's not be satisfied with little. Let's press in. Let's press in. Lord, you are my heart desire. You are all that I want. You are my expectation. Whatever you said before you that becomes your expectation or that becomes the drive. That bec whatever wakes you up in the morning. Amen. That pushes you to do things. If God is not the center focus of that thing, you're going to be disappointed. You will be disappointed because the enemy is going to touch everything. They will permit him to touch everything. That is his assignment. Don't you understand that Lucifer is carrying out an assignment hashed in God? You think this battle is between light and darkness? No. In God, darkness and light are the same before him. That's what the scripture says. You think God is fighting darkness? <laughs> so they will allow him... To use all kinds of things to challenge your idea, your belief system, your values. Oh, I'm going through hell. <laughs> hell. Who defines hell? I'm in need. I'm in lack. You are not in need. You are not in lack. You're going through something to prepare you for whatever he has ordained for you. Our understanding of this God. I, I, you see, one of the things... That I feel we need to begin to even go back to is to look again. Who is God to us? Do we understand this God, this being, this father we call God? Do we really, to, do we truly? I know the mind cannot fully comprehend him. But even in the dimensions of our spirit, have we come to the basic fundamentals, realities of who he is in our life? Do we know him? All right. Somebody get a little bit of God knows what. The person begins to shake. Ah, God, God, God cannot be. God, God cannot be this quarrel. God cannot be this evil. God. If you believe that God can be evil, then you don't know Him. If you believe that God can allow things to happen to you because He's trying to, He's trying to get at you, then you don't know Him. Did you hear what I just said? If you think that God will allow something to happen to you, Amen. Just, just because He wants to get at you. Then you don't know him. Because God, in his nature, is love. If he rebukes you, that's love. If he corrects you, is love. If he gives to you, is love. If he takes from you, is love. That's why I prayed that prayer the last time. You know, it wasn't just a post. That's a prayer. Lord, may I come to the point where the things you take from me are the answers of my prayer. The things you didn't give to me, that be the answer of my prayer. 
You see, that is a prayer of a man who is searching for him. We want to know him. Because everything he does, the Bible says, God is good and his mercy endures forever. Forever. Let me give you another word. The Bible says, say, Lord, I will be with you till the end of the age. Did he, did he, did he leave amen, an option that said, okay, I'm going to be with you until you fail me. I'm going to continue to walk with you until you disappoint me. Whenever you don't feel his presence in your life, it's not him. You check yourself. <laughs> Whenever things are take, taken from you, don't blame him. Ask him, what are you doing? What would you want me to know? What are you saying? Our values of how we even understand the things of God is corrupt, is perverted. That's why people can backslide after a while. They're serving God. Then you suddenly, no. That you, that you turn your back from him. Amen. Uh, uh, Ten years. You turn your back from him. Twenty years. Do you think he left? He never left. If he's everywhere. If he covers everything. If he's everything. If he feels all things. So where would he be living to? The Bible says it is your sin that separates you from him. Not God. God, God never separates, separates himself from us. He said it is our sin. See, the consciousness of sin in our life, amen, is the distance of God in our life. The consciousness of sin in us is the distance of the absence of God in our life. But God is, God is there. Why do you think the time you worship him, you, you pray and you worship him and you feel his closeness? What? Is it the worship that brought him? <laughs> no, the worship never brought him. The worship just changed amen, your, your, your sense of engagement and your, your, your world, your perspective. That's what worship does. As you worship him, amen, you see him, he gets clearer. He, his vision gets clearer. He becomes more magnified. The more you worship God, the more your vision of God increases, increases, increases. Worship magnifies God in our life. So if everything you do is worship, God gets to be magnified in your life. Yes. You know, you need a magnifier to see things that are small, right? Yeah. Worship enhances you to see what God is doing, where God is in your life. You see, worship is not the music. Worship is a life of sacrifice and obedience. So before you think now I'm talking about music, because that's what we like to do. When you hear something, you use your own interpretation to change it. No, worship is whenever you yield yourself in obedience, whenever his, his will, his kingdom come to your space, the more you allow him, amen, to take residence, amen, you're struggling, you know, no. When, when his voice come, you can, be, as we study in the word of God, you can be worshiping because the word of God is showing you what God demands, what God requires. The word of God is showing you, the more your heart says yes to that, yes to that, that's worship, worship. You only worship that which is bigger than you. Are you getting the points, friends? With beginning to come to know God, learn of him by heart. Our heart needs to be educated regarding the, the things of God, regarding the ways of God. Our heart needs, our heart is the place where God amen, instructs us. That's the place where the Holy Spirit instructs. But it's your duty and my duty, amen, to bring every faculty of our being to comply with what God is doing within, amen. Imagine go to school and get distracted by your friends. They're your friends, but they're distracting you. The teacher is teaching. But you, 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 know, all, you, know, you know how they do it? All kinds of distraction is they're passing all kinds of messages across. You never learn. That's where you need to say, hey, hey, no, 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 no. I need to be focused. You need to bring your soul. You need to bring your faculties. You need to bring your ideas. You need to bring your fear, your feelings, those disappointments. You need to hush them. Hush. The Lord is speaking. Our problem is we are too indisciplined and too weak to bring the soul under the compliance, amen, of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. 
And of course, we cannot do that by our own power. But at least let's acknowledge that and then go to God and say, God, give me grace. Give me strength to bring my soul to the place of divine compliance so that I can obey. I can live. You know, God speaks to you once. He speaks to you again. and But you're not doing it or you're still waiting for something else. No, 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 no. Because I'm not going to engage in that area again. I've spoken to you once. I've spoken to you another time. You should now respond. Is when you try to respond to what God says and they see that you don't have the grace, the power, then they give you. It gives, it gives power to the faint. But imagine you don't even know that you're fainting. <laughs> How do you then you receive power? You only receive grace, amen, for a state of awareness you know that you, you, you lack. When you are aware that you lack something, that's when you cry out to God, right? The Bible says that, you know, uh, 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 Peter was sinking. What did he do? He cried out to God. He said, Lord, save me. Imagine you're sinking, but you're pretending, no, I'm not sinking. I'm still walking on the water. <laughs> you're going to drown. So we have to acknowledge. We have to acknowledge and respond. When we acknowledge, we respond. When we acknowledge, when God speaks to you, amen, you respond. You see? The things of God will always start with a whisper. If you don't respond to the whisper, do you think somebody says, I want to be, I want to be a powerful prophet. I want God to use me. I want, no, I <laughs> want God to use me better than Isaiah Phillips, which is good. Like it, I want everybody watching, following us to be far better than me. I'm not the benchmark. Christ is the benchmark. But at least we admire people. There are people that also admire ministry. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's why they put people in our life. So it's good to admire. I like what God is doing. After all, <laughs> if you're not admiring what God is doing in my life, you won't be coming every day. Come on. That's, a, that's honest truth. So it's good to admire. You, in fact, the Bible says we must covet each other's gift. You covet the gift. You understand? But guess what? It's not enough just to covet the gift. You have to learn to respond. Like some of you are doing. And I appreciate your ability to respond to the voice of the Spirit. It's good. You see, when you respond to the voice of the Spirit, what God does, all right, it takes you to another height. It takes you to another height. The place you stop in responding, that's where you're going to stop. Those are the things of the Spirit. Is That's where we need spiritual education. What I'm doing, amen, what I do every morning is to, is to build you up spiritually, is to train you, is to empower you. See, we don't just come to pray, pray. No, prayer must be done, amen, intelligently via the Spirit. Amen. There are spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence is to know, amen, the things that are hidden. The Bible says it is the glory of God, amen, to, to cover a thing. To, to, to cover a thing is the glory. The glory of God is to cover it, amen. The glory of kings is to unveil it, is to search it out. That's what I'm doing. I'm showing you the path of kings. The word kings there are leaders. So don't begin to think they're talking about kings. No, they're talking about leaders. The glory of those who will be leading, amen, is to find a way to unseal the things that have been covered. Because if they, if they, if they leave everything uncovered, amen, people will come and take advantage of it. People who are not mature, who, don't, who, who, are, not even, who, don't, who are not even prepared, ready for the things of the street, they will be joking around. This is what is going on. This is, this is what has happened to the church in the past, all right, you know, 30, you know, 40 decades. How we have, see, see how we have taught powerful, torn powerful charismatic gift. A gift that was given to the church. We took it and we used it to build our own thing. <laughs> no more so. It's no longer going to be so in this season in time. Now they say before you begin to walk in the power. For that gift to walk in your life. You have to first of all go the way of the spirit. Amen. It's from the, listen. The Lord dropped a word in my spirit yesterday evening. The place of ministry begins from the place of divine encounter. Anyone who goes into ministry and have not encountered God <laughs> will have to face the music or by, by himself or herself. Hardly would you find anybody in the scripture who God called into ministry without a personal encounter. Show me the person. There are a lot of people, there are a lot of people God used. But I'm talking of people called into ministry. Whose life, amen, has become a called out. You see, God uses everybody. God uses everybody. And in fact, I still hear that problem. I still hear that issue in the body of Christ today. No, God, God uses everybody. 
Of course, God uses everybody, but not everybody is called into the fivefold. That fivefold ministry, a special ministry. That's why sometimes I say some things. I know a lot of people get angry with me. If God has called you into a full-time ministry, somebody say define full-time ministry. The word full-time means full-time. means your entire life, your mind, your soul, your body, every aspect of your being, amen, is for his ministry. If God has called you into all of that and you're looking for money first, then you, we are not called into ministry. Oh, this, this, is, a, this is very controversial. It's, it's not controversial. The standard of God never changed. I'm in a full-time ministry. But at least the Lord supply my needs. At least. And every day I still engage him to supply. Alright? So, if he doesn't supply, then, then I, I, I'm, I'm left with what I have. And if I don't have, it's part of ministry. Paul said we learn, amen, amen to abound and to abase. <laughs> yes. It's okay not to have. It's all part of a ministry, processing growth. But if you're running, you know, 24 hours, you're running, looking for money. You're walking around. Look, I'm not saying people should not walk. I never said that. But I say, if God has called you into ministry, all right? And in fact, when I used to do leadership training, I tell them, if God has called you into ministry, yes, you can start by walking. But after a while, you will notice the Lord will begin to tell you, now it's time. It's time to focus. Because listen to this. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot give 50% of your time amen, to the things of God and give 50. I told you when I, used, when, I, when I used to live in Johannesburg, you know, I used to do a lot of leadership training. You know, all of these men of God, they used to invite me to come and do training for them, kingdom apostolic training. So I used to go. You will see a man of God. I mean, I'm, I'm already there, you know, there in the church waiting. Guess what? The man just drove in. He's coming from work. He's coming from FMB because he works in FMB. They make good money. It's coming from, you know, you know, Standard Bank. It's coming from God knows where. They make good money. But guess what? <laughs> By the time he gets into the church, they're just starting everything. You can see that this man has not prayed. In fact, half of the, half of the way into the message, the man is, you know, is dozing. Don't you understand that rest is part of ministry? Rest. That before a man of God comes, you know, to, to give the word of God, to speak, you have to rest. How can you rest? You see, because the world system have so made it that, all right, if you don't do X, Y, Z, you're not going to get X, Y, Z. You know what? Because they also want to live to a certain standard. They want to live, to, they want to live in a particular, you know, area in the, in, the, in, the, in, 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 in the city. They want to live in the very rich area. They want to ride very, and these guys, you can see the cars. They, you can see they must be paying close to five, six thousand every month for that, for that car. Yes. So it's all about show. But that's not ministry. That is not ministry. It's all about show. And I finished doing a whole training for a whole month. You know, I was going, I think, every Tuesday. They were taking me there. Every, when I'm done, this man still had the audacity to give me 1,500. I said, this is the reason why God doesn't prosper you people. Never forget. You know why? They took me for granted because... Isaiah would just come. Isaiah would do what he needs to do. But among themselves, they know they will not do that. Among themselves, the man said, okay, I'm going to do this training for you. But, you know, before I even come, I want to see 15000 in my account first. Oh, I'm not moving. We know all of these things. But they've received their reward. You see, it's not like we don't know these things. You see, if I have to look at all of those things, I will also beat the bait. I will join them. No, no. You know, some people think this guy is foolish. This guy is foolish. How can you do all of this thing? You don't sell your material. You don't do... How? No. That's the reason why God will steer people. God will send people. All right? Who God will, you know, it's, I say, hey, I need you to be a blessing to my servant. And that little blessing that you receive will go a long way. Because that's not blood money. That's not carnal money. That's not fleshy money. You see? We have to understand. All the things of God has to be sacred. they sacred. You see, we can chip in the things of God. I say, but well, that's what everybody does. But you're not everybody. I'm not everybody. You see, you wonder why certain people, they just don't want to, you know, relate with you. No, they can't relate because your standard is too high for them. But you don't have no standard. You're just trying to follow what God says in his word. 
You're just following what God. So it's all about make believe. Number, you've got this big building. You've got this big, you know, uh, uh, equipment in your church. You've got these uh, choirs that don't, have not prayed up. They don't even understand what. They, you know, everybody's just copying what everybody's doing. It's just let's just let's just keep up with the Jones. Let's just do every, do, do what everybody's doing. Just do what yes. Every Monday for ever having conference, 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 conference. No, it's just to maintain the people because if the people are giving so much offering and titans, you've got to keep something up. You've got to keep doing something up. But alas, God is not there. It's empty. It's empty barrel. It's empty sound. God is not there. He's left long time ago. What they have, he may left, is just, it's just the bones, the carcass. That's all they have left. Friends, if we are going to live life and engage in the new day that we've been brought into, we have to reprioritize our life. And if God has called you to work in the marketplace, make sure that your heart, your entire business, amen, you know, value system is to advance the kingdom of God. We, we are not in Babylon to make money. We are in Babylon, amen, to interface with Babylon, to engage Babylon, hallelujah, to advance the kingdom of God while we are making money. So we don't, as, as Christians, you shouldn't go into business to make money. You go into ministry, you go into, me, into business, amen, to advance the purposes of God, to touch lives. While you're doing that, God will be increasing you financially. He'll be blessing you. Do you think, do you think it's a big thing for God to give you, amen, you know, a, a hundred million? I mean, we've seen thieves, thieves, stealing hundred million, three hundred million, eight hundred million from government. Do you, so do you think that's, that's nothing to God? When you get your priorities right, money is the least thing. Money is the least thing when it comes to the order of wealth. Money is the least. That's why those who don't know how to use money, amen, they get corrupt by the spirit of mammon. <laughs> Those who don't know how to use money, those who don't understand the purpose of money, they get corrupt. They, they get captured by, you know, by the spirit called Amen. Mammon. Mammon is a prince. So in their world collapse, they're gone. Have you noticed that in that day, money will not be able to save them? We use money to advance the purpose of God. And God is going to give some of you. God is going to give you a lot of it. A lot of it. Why? Because God is already threshing your heart. Yes. When God sees that he owns your heart, he will give you his treasure. When God finally owns your heart, he will allow you to have a place in his heart. Think about it. This, If you want to hear me preaching... On prosperity, come listen to Isaiah Phillips. <laughs> I will tell you the right concept of how to how to be rich in Babylon. Just need to look at the life of them that God, Amen, has used in time past. How how they left for God a posterity. I mean, the king of Babylon bowed to Daniel. He bowed to. He said, "There is no other God." I mean, that is the that is Mammon himself bowing to to, to Daniel. Excuse me, what business was that Daniel doing in Babylon? <laughs> Than to be representing God. You know, you're sitting if in front of a man, you 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 you're, you're transacting business, you're talking about you know, issues of you know, money, all whatever it is. And God is showing the heart of that person. <laughs> and God is asking you, ask this person, say this thing, XYZ. And the person looks at you, his, his jaw is almost dropping. How did you know that? <laughs> you can't cheat me. <laughs> How did you know that? Hey, listen, that's why those in Babylon, listen, before they even go into transaction, don't you think they go, they go consult certain powers? Yes. Friends, let's get this thing clear. I've not seen that thing that will move me from what God has called me to do, to be chasing, chasing things, chasing shadows. Fridays, you know, to, 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 you know, to, from Monday to Friday, they are sweating all over the place. And they call this, they say they are priests. No, God has no, yes, you're working for God, but you're not in the full-time ministry. Somebody said there's nothing like full-time ministry where you get a big, go read your Bible again. We've allowed some strength teachings to come into the church. And this is the reason why, because people like us, well, it's okay, if God has called you, let God supply your needs. No, 
God does supply our needs because there are people who he has empowered, whom he has graced to go out there and walk in the field, amen, and they come back and they honor the grace of them, amen, that have been placed in the house to, you know, to, to continue to hear from God and proclaim the heart of God and allow, amen, you see, the things of God are, are, are done in divine integration. You've got to understand that. I don't even know why I'm, the Lord is leading me on this path. You've got to understand that divine integration. If God has blessed you so much, all right, and you refuse to remit that blessing to the next person that requires it, they, has a, they have a way of taking it from you. That's just simple. They have a way of taking it. Because that th money is not even yours. <laughs> the grace to get the money, amen, comes from somewhere, amen. Yes, you've got to understand that. We don't preach that. We don't force that on people. But people need to understand that. People need to understand that. See, that's why I say when we get to know God, doing things for God will not, be, will not be a burden. It's never a burden for me to do what I'm doing. It's never a burden for me to wake up in the morning to encourage you, to steer your heart, to prepare you. Because I know he is my reward. You see, you've got to know that. You see, the reason why some people right now, they're still sleeping. Because Babylon, have, Babylon has used them <laughs> from Monday. So, Saturday, I need to sleep. I need to sleep. So it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. That's why they, 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 they get burnt out. They get tired. They get frustrated. You know? And God help you in that workplace. You go and make some mistake. They fire you. Then they want to commit suicide. Because their whole world, you see, their, the, the values, the, the, the perspective of life is totally upside down. It's not right. You go get a big building. How do you sustain that building? Did God ask you to get a big building because he wants you to, big a build, to build a big ministry? No, he never sent you to do that. You did that by your own wisdom. So you have to look for a way to be maintaining that building. God help you. If the people start leaving the church, then you go into all kinds of gimmicks. And you're trying to get money. They will go look for this big man of God. This God knows. It's, it's, it's the same principle of the world. Go look for this big name. This guy who's traveled all over the world. Okay. You bring people. When, when the people come, yes. You hit them. You know, they say you hit the higher when it's hot the most. So this guy comes and sack them up. They scrape the money from the people. Aren't you going to get tired of that? See, when you do something God never sent you to do, you will need to be depending on the wisdom of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to maintain it. I mean, God is speaking. I used to know a man of God back in those days in Nigeria. This man of God, he's got branches. Branches all over. I mean, big ministry. And problem began to surface in all of the branches. You know how they do branches? God never sent them to do branches, but they're doing branches. They've got branches here, branches here. So this man, I guess the Lord dealt with him one day. He just woke up. He said, okay, all of you guys, this is what I'm going to do. I want you guys to close down all the branches and come back to the headquarter. <laughs> he said, what? Come back to the headquarter. So some, say, okay, some, some refuse. He said, it's, it's okay. If you are refusing, you can take the church. It's yours. I've never heard a man that does such a thing. Because I guess God must have dealt with this man. Maybe they showed him, look, this is your end. If you don't stop this nonsense you're doing. He shut down the entire or the church. He said, no, no, God didn't send me to all of those people. I'm not, part, I'm not their father. So if you want to continue to keep, go ahead, do it. And guess what? I know a lot of people who, who, kept, who, who, who took that church over. Now they're talking apostolic. What apostolic are you talking about? When you know that church is not even yours. The root, the root will always bear the right, the, you know, the, 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 the right fruit. If it's evil, if the root is evil, it will produce no matter. You can't change it. You've got to shut it down. Then you let the man release you. But a man of God tells you, shut down the church. You refuse to shut it. You say you can own it. And you decide, well, it's mine. You must, you must be the biggest fool on earth. Because the foundation that defined that church is not even yours. Are you getting everything about the things of, of God, amen, are done in divine order and pattern. 
we, we cannot decide, okay, I have changed. But you, you are not going back to correct the pattern. And you just continue. You say, well, 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 I've, I've, after I've repented. No. Repentance means going back and correct the foundation. Or shut it down. And then go out and do your own thing. You see, I can speak like this because I never broke out from any church when I started ministry. I started preaching to people on the street, one by one, two by two, three by three. That's how I started ministry. So, because I understand the principle. <laughs> Father, we thank you. I, I, I'm just sharing something with us this morning. We need, if it's going to take you the next 20 years to encounter God, you better wait for him. Because that waiting is ministry. Whoever told you that waiting on God is not ministry? Whoever told you that, hey, just get it started. Just start it, start it. You start it. Then you discover five years later, wait, wait a minute. You're seeing cracks. You're seeing all kinds of things happening. And you're trying to patch it and it's not working. You still have to go back and do the thing that you don't want to do. But you see, in our case, most of the time people don't go back. They continue. They continue to patch it. And then one day the whole thing will collapse on them. Because that's how they define ministry. Because to them, ministry is, is show. is show. It's what you can show. It's what you can reveal. It's what, you know, you can... Oh, I was listening to a man of God yesterday. E.W. Kenyon. No. We'll talk about that some, sometime. Next, ne next time, hopefully. Or maybe I'll never talk about it, but we'll see. But the, I know now the Lord doesn't want me to talk about that. Let's, let's look at Isaiah 28. 26. I've got a couple of scriptures that I just quickly, quickly want to share with us. And I know the Lord is already speaking to us. Yes. There are a group of people the Lord is selecting for himself in this last day. He's separating them. He's separating them. And he will deal with them. He will refine them. And then he will, he will deploy them back. He will send them back to the field for the work. If we continue the way things are today, <laughs> the Lord will have to raise a different generation to do the job. No, but... He always have himself, amen, a witness. He always have himself a remnant within the remnant. The priest must not labor in sweat. It's one of the commands given to the Levitical order. And that principle, amen, is still found today even in the Melchizedek order. The work, of, the work of God must be carried out. The life we live for God must be done in the state of peace. Is the prince of Salem. Isaiah 26. I'm just going to read the scripture. There's something the Lord is saying. Then I'm going to go back to one or two other scriptures that will be done for this morning. Isaiah chapter 26. In that, in that, in that day, this song will be sung. In the land of Judah. In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes, God makes salvation its wall. And ramparts. God makes salvation its wall and ramparts. Then verse 2 says, open the gates. That the righteous nations may enter. Excuse me, that the righteous nation may enter. Open the gates. That the righteous nation may enter. The nation that keep faith. You will keep in perfect peace. Him whose mind is steadfast. Or whose mind stays on you. Some translation will say. Because he trusts in you. And he say, trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord is rock eternal i was just looking at the scripture and i begin to hear god you know speak to me through the scripture he said we have a strong city of course the city of god begins amen with the condition of our hearts the bible says god has placed eternity in our lives yes he's building a city but that city is that god is building amen <laughs> are individuals who are coming to the reality of you know his revelation so we have a strong city. God makes that the wall of that city salvation and his rampart. 
Then he went, he said, open the gates. Now, the word is, God is opening, amen, to us again, another dimension of engaging life. They were coming out of the ark. So, coming out of the ark is an opening, amen, of a gate, of a spiritual gate that is allowing us once again to engage the, the things of the Spirit. So, it's from that point that I'm looking at this. He said, open the gates that the righteous nation, nation, we know we are part of the nation of God. That the righteous nation, the righteous people, the people of God, people who have a standing with God, a righteous nation is a nation that has proximity, connection with heaven, amen, who have an opening. The righteous nation may enter, we are entering. So what is bringing us to this new season, this new day that we live in, amen, is the state of our position in righteousness before God. And that is what is giving us entrance, hallelujah, to move into this, this new day, this new order, amen, that the Father amen, has, has given to us. It says, it says, you will keep in perfect peace. That is a covenant. You will keep in perfected peace. Those whose mind are steadfast or whose mind, amen, stays on you. Those whose mind stays on you. Whose minds are steadfast. Whose mind? Friends, I want you to know that word, mind. That's the faculty of the soul. Whose mind stays on you. Now listen to this scripture in, in, um, in James chapter 4. James chapter, sorry, James chapter 1 verse 4. It said, but let patience, let patience, excuse me, let patience have a perfect, a perfect work. Or let patience, amen, have a perfect work. Yes, let patience have a perfect work. The word, let patience have a perfect work. In other words, give, give the patience, amen, the full control to to do, to, to build, to, to establish what amen, God will have it established in you. Patient. Now, what is patient? Of course, we know that patient is one of the what? One of the fruits of the Spirit. But patient, amen, beyond just a fruit of the Spirit, patient is what really, put it, let me put it this way, patient is the measuring yastic. Is the measuring rod, amen, that God uses, amen, to define if indeed we have come to understand the things of the Spirit. How we, how we, how we grow and, and relate in the spirit of patience, because patience is a spirit. Whatever is of the fruit of the Spirit, amen, is a spirit. Patience is, patience is not, well, somebody psych you up and say, okay, don't get angry. Patience is not just about not getting angry you know, or being able to keep your calm. Patient, amen, is a fruit of a developed spirit, of a mature spirit. Now, it says, let patient, let patient have a perfect, perfect. So, sometimes we, we can allow patient to a certain level. And after a while, no, 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 I, I, this guy's taking me to be a fool. I've also made that mistake. No, 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 I, I'm not going to be quiet again. No, let patient have now the word the word perfect is a very interesting word is the word teleos teleos is a very excuse me is a very important key is a very important word all right in the in the ministry of spiritual development now the word teleos means complete remember when the bible says to will come to the full stature of Christ. That word full stature, that word full stature, amen, is the same word that means teleos. We come to maturity. Have you noticed that patient is what brings us to maturity? So we can have all of the fruit and all of the gifts of the Spirit basically in our lives. But if we are not patient, now what am I talking, why am I emphasizing on patience? Because it is through patience that the work of the Spirit can be fully wrought in us. It's so easy for God to be doing something in our life and for us to jump out and say, well, well, well I, think I, I think I know what God is doing. Now. I think I'm actually mature enough. I think I've actually received. I think I know what, but there are still areas in our life 
Patience is like when something terrible happens to you. And you are, of course, naturally expected to react in a certain way. But the opposite is what you do. Not, not doing it because, you know, uh, you're trying to psych yourself up to do that thing. But because it has become the natural default of, 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 of reacting. That's the best way I can put it. Patient has become the natural default of your reaction. When the Lord begins to see that kind of life in us, you know what begins to happen? They begin to deposit the giftings and the grace of the Spirit in our life. We become, we become the house of God's economy. Why? Because we have come to Telios. Telios means to come to completeness. Now, but not just completeness in one thing. In all the various aspects of life, this is the key. To come to maturity in all of the various areas of your, you know, development, of your perspective, engagement. So, you're not one person today and then tomorrow you're a different person. Alright? You, you, you don't walk uprightly today and so something happens to you next month and suddenly you change. That's not telios. Telios means that you come into maturity in every area. The way you see, the way you act, the way you relate, the way you talk, the way you behave. That is coming into, you know, the, the, if you will, bringing forth what you have encountered in God. Because that's what is going to happen to you. Your life becomes a reflection, a mirror, if you will, of Christ. Completion in all the various applications of labor, growth, mental, and even immoral character. I'm just reading what Telios means. When you come into Telios, amen, you, you express what is called the neuter. The neuter. The word neuter means, that was, that's where the word Newton, you know, Neutron, if you will, comes from. That thing that causes you to live life. That your life becomes predictable. If he's righteous, he's righteous. Your, that, that neuter, that seed, that's the word. That word neuter is a seed. Is a neutron of life. You come to completeness. Completeness. A full aged, mature man, a full age, a full grown. That's what Ephesians, you know, for is talking about. You come to this point. Nobody comes to this point by just acquiring scripture. Of course, we need scripture to show us what is expected of us. Like the Lord opened my eyes this morning. He said, Truth is not the ultimate of your journey. Truth is what you need to begin the journey. I just put my hand on my head. I said, Lord, speak to me. You know, we, we talk about so much of truth, 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 truth. Yes, we need the truth. Not to be deceived by the error, but the fact that we've acquired truth is not enough. Truth is the guide, is the, if you will, truth is the, is the, is the guide. It's what the Holy Spirit uses to lead us, to guide us. To the place in the Father. To the place of his intention or purpose for our life. So, I can have all the knowledge of this book behind me. All of this. I can have all the knowledge of this thing. And still never be awakened to the ways of God or to the will of God. It is not how much of truth, knowledge I have acquired. Truth must open me up. The must, truth is the gateway. And begin to point you. You follow. Truth must become incarnated. Truth must take your hand. 
That's why they say Jesus is the way, is the truth that leads to life. Are you getting? It leads to life. It leads to life. A truth that has not led you into the life of God is just another acquired head knowledge. And we can talk about that. You can preach on that. I mean, we can live on that realm of truth. I mean, I love truth. You know that. That's one of my key ministry. But beyond loving truth, I love life. I love the life of God. Jesus Christ came to give us life. He didn't just come to give us the truth. Why? Because he is the truth. So truth leads us to life. Oh, Jesus. When you touch the life of God, the things of God begin to flow out of you. I ran up with this testimony. I was sitting outside my gate yesterday, just sitting at the bench. And there's this guy walked, he just came to the gate. I know I, I, his name, his face looks familiar. But this guy was dead drunk, drunk. And he wanted to talk to me. So, of course, the first reaction is, I mean, you, you're drunk. You, I, I, I want to hear you, but why don't you go and come back when you're sober that you, we, can, we, can, we can chat. But he insisted. And normally when, you know, somebody insists, I, I, won't, I won't allow. I, I mean, normally I would just lock the gate. But I, I felt the Holy Spirit say, no, allow him. In fact, before I opened the gate, he just walked in and went straight and sit on my decks outside. I'm still trying to pick what's going on in the spirit. Because, I mean, th this just happened in seconds. So he's sitting now. His, 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 his eyes are red. You know, when people are, you know, that kind of when you get drunk, his eyes are already red and you can see him staggering. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do I do? I have... And he said, no, 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 Pastor, I want, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. He's still out. I said, you know what? Before I talk to you, can I pray for you? He said, yes. So I began to pray for him. The Holy Spirit said, don't just pray for him. I need you to take charge over his spirit now. I need you to cast out the demons, the satanic spirit that has held him back. The spirit of drunk, drunkenness and alcohol and all of this perverted. I just held his hand. He held my hand and he was pressing so tight my hand. You could see the spirit was getting angry. And I began to command the spirit. I'm not making noise. I'm just addressing that spirit. I'm just addressing the spirit. Friends. A few minutes later, you see this guy start weeping like a baby. You see this, the spirit resisting and, and he's fighting. And that thing finally left him. And he was, he was sobbing. I said to Lord, thank you, Father, that I did not allow my, my mind, you know, my own sense of judgment to deprive him of his freedom. But here is the point, another point that I want to make. The power of God, when you're walking with God, the power of God is always resident with you. Even when you don't feel it or you don't know it's there, it's there. When the occasion comes that calls for the power, it will work. And this is a principle that applies in every area. When you stand in that board meeting or whatever meeting it is that you need to do, you just need to depend on the Holy Spirit and let what God wants to do happen. God will use you. God will speak. It's the power is there. His spirit is there. His grace is there. This man left my house free. That's the proof. Not just to me, but maybe also to you because I'm sharing this with you. The resident power of God never leaves us. Even when you don't feel it. That was, I mean, I was just relaxing on a nice sunny afternoon. You know, the weather has been cold. So I'm just sitting there, you know, 
trying to meditate and just enjoy you know the nice weather and this guy came <laughs> and i was not just in the mood you know this 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 i mean it's a different thing when you are ready it's okay okay yeah come it's a different thing when you're not even ready i wasn't ready but the lord has always been ready that's the point i was making there's always there he will always be there but you must you must always track his presence in your life that's that's important he said i would never leave you nor forsake you but let let patient let the fruit of the spirit let let pa let patient amen complete his work let patience complete his work what is the work that patient is doing in your life what is the work that amen the fruits of the spirit are doing in your life you see this is learning by heart you see that's god teaching me how to learn by heart you see my head was trying to struggle with the things the spirit of god is trying to do and if i depended on my on my you know what i what i my own judgment and my judgment at least was was not wrong i'm trying to like you you're drunk you can't <laughs> but the lord said let him come after all it's about the clash of power this is what i'm going to end up with you cannot survive the days we live in without the resident life of God. Listen, the power of God flow from the residence of God in our life. These are not days where, you know, God will allow you to use a gift while his presence is not there in your life. No, 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 no. The Lord is coming down. He wants to come and dwell. He said, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. We, we always quote that scripture. Those who know their God will be strong and they will do exploit. But like I said earlier on, when we began, I said, this scripture is made in the context. Thank you, Father. It's made in the context that we need to look into. And let me, I want to take it from Daniel 30, Daniel 11, from 31 to 32. An army or an arm shall stand on his path, and they shall pollute the, the, the sanctuary. The, new, the, the NIV says, his forces will rise up and desecrate the temple fortress. This is the army of the of the man of sin, or the evil one, or whatever name. All right, there are several names. All right, to the you know to to you know to to, to define them. The, you know the antichrist, the man of sin, Lucifer himself. All right, several names. Listen, this Bible says they will abolish the daily sacrifice and set up the abomination of desolation. So these are the realities that will begin to pan out in the days that we live in, which of course is already happening before us. An arm shall stand on his path, and they shall pollute the sanctuary, the sanctuary, the temple, the place of worship. But okay, yeah, that, that's a physical temple they're going to pollute, all right? But what about our own temple? What, what about our own body? Amen? What about our own space? They shall pollute the sanctuary, of his strength, the sanctuary, the place of his of God's position, of God's life. The Bible says they will abolish the daily sacrifice. That's a law that will be passed. Abolish. Didn't we see it now with the corona? For people who are looking for, you know, is, is this some of the yes, it's part of some of the things happening in the end time. Did, did, did they not stop him at the daily sacrifice? Did they, did they not stop the church from going people from going to worship? Yes, this is a, this is a, I told you we're in the day of the manifestation of the man of sin. They will abolish the daily sacrifice and set up amen, the abomination of desolation. Now but look at this verse verse uh, uh, 32 says and such that do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt under Rabbi Yatala Basianda. 
those who do wickedly to the covenant those who 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 breach the covenant of God? Those, amen, who have refused to walk in the pathway, in the will, in the desires of God, in the counsel of God. Can you see so many, so many things are coming out in this morning's uh, 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 engagement? Those who do wickedly to the covenant. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall the man of sin the beast, the false prophet, the antichrist, whatever you want to call him. Amen. He shall corrupt. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt. So when we, when we refuse the covenant, when we refuse to walk with God, the will of God, the counsels of God, we give leeway, we give entrance, amen, for this evil spirit, for this evil system to do what? To penetrate. And such that do wickedly, amen, with the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries. Listen to this, with flatteries. Flatteries means deception. I'm reading through translation at the same time. With flatteries. With smooth words. With corny words. The mind. The enemy will be able to penetrate the minds of people with flatteries. Why? Because they have not sought to keep, to walk the covenant. The covenant. This We're talking about the covenant people have with God. So before the man of sin, the antichrist, whatever you want to call him, amen, have leeway, have entrance. Enter into the temple to desecrate. He must have made amen, allegiance with those who have, who have broken the covenant. With flatteries, he will corrupt those, amen, who violate the covenant of God. But there's a different group of people. But those who know their God. In the midst of this desecration, in the midst of this evil and perversion, there is a people, the Bible says, those who know their God, amen, shall be strong and do exploit. This is the day God wants to reveal his glory and his power. Thine is the kingdom, the glory, the power. We've got to understand, friends, that as the spirit of God continue to engage or say, hey, I need you to know me, is to get ourselves prepared for this reality when, he begins, when it begins to happen. Did you see how that doctor the American doctor stood and proclaimed and declared what she believes. That was her day. Her time came. And by the way, we discovered that she was a minister. She, in fact, not she was. She's the minister. Minister of the gospel. Only a minister of the gospel can. That's the point that I'm making. The only one who knows God can make such proclamation. And make, even Christians are mocking her. No, that she's, she's, not, she's not politically correct. But that's not the way to. I mean, this woman understands what she's up against you see she understand that her qualification her education her, you know her, her practice as a doctor she understood that that is for the advancement of the kingdom that's what i keep saying that if we don't understand why god sent us to school why we learn certain things why we acquire certain things why they give us money all when the day comes for us to defend the things of god we'll be we'll be, we'll be you know compromising because you're thinking of oh my 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 license she said, who cares? Let him come for my license. We are in the days of the end. We are, we are, we are, we are seeing, all right, the beginning. We are scratching the surface of this thing. Facebook took down, you know, a page. Our, our, our site was, was, you know, was, was hacked. Okay. But she has continued. Guess what? Yesterday I was listening to, you know, watching a clip by, you know, on, on YouTube. Even Donald Trump acknowledged that woman. That is Esther. Amen. That is my sister Tina. That is Esther in Babylon. That is that is that is an Esther. That is the arising. That's the now. I mean, that woman's life alone, you, you can write a whole book. I mean, you you stood. <laughs> you brought down the whole system. 
They were not expecting it. You see, what I, what I keep saying to people is, in the day of the prophetic fulfillment of God's agenda, listen to this, many people will still be like wondering. The Bible says, and they did not know until Daniel entered the ark. We are living in one of the most glorious days where God's prophetic activity is being accelerated. The counsels of God is being fulfilled. But you see, if you have broken the covenant, if if you have if you have if you have if you have refused, Amen, to walk and remain and and connect and live life within the context of the covenant, with flatteries, that evil spirit will come in and hijack you with flatteries. He will corrupt those who violate the covenant. Friends, you don't want to violate the covenant of God. Come, walk with me and be perfect, he said. Can we live life? You see, we're addressing all of these issues of the mark of the beast. That's a woman, amen, who said, no, I'm not going to allow people to receive this mark. Because the mark, like I said, is a, is, you know, is a, is a, is a seal amen, of, of compromise. is a seal of worship, false worship. Who do you... Who, who, who do you give your allegiance to? It's a beautiful day. With flatteries, it will corrupt those who violate the covenant. But the people who know their God. Are you getting the point? But the people who know their God. That's why in, this, in the past you know, six, uh, five sessions or four sessions that we have done on this concept towards spiritual maturity amen, is dealing with the position, the condition of our heart in pursuing God. Those who know their God. Do you know him? Because it's when you know him that you are able to act, to stand strong and then do exploit. I mean, I sat down yesterday because I, I, at least I know my God to a certain level. <laughs> the devil came and challenged that power. God showed up. And that's how God is going to be showing up in our lives. So let's always get ourselves ready and prepared. Our minds ready and prepared. Let's not, let's not think, oh, I'm just, you, you say, I've not called you to serve me in vain. The time you spend in prayer, in seeking, in reading, in studying, with sincerity, not trying to prove a point to anybody. No, 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 no. You see, when they see that your motive is trying to prove a point, they will never deposit the power of God in your life. Because all you're trying to do is to prove a point to somebody. You're not trying to, please. As we engage with the things of God, don't seek to impress people. Because that thing will corrupt you with flatteries. Seek God because you need to know him. Seek God because you need him in your life. And when they see sincerity, when they see honesty, they see truth, they see obedience, they, they see faith in you, Ah, they will deposit the life of God in you. Lord, we want to thank you. You see, I've given you something this morning for you to pray with. That's what we do. So, if we don't have all the time to pray, you've received something. This is how you're going to pray. You use the word you've received for the day to pray. Lord, I thank you. I've heard this word this morning. I'm renewing my covenant with you. So that in the day where the man of sin comes and desecrates the temple, I will not be part of them that he will use. No, I'm part of them that will, be, that will be strong because I know you. And because I know you, you will cause me, Lord, to do exploit. I want to be part of a generation that you will use to do exploit. But my heart is not just about doing exploit. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to please you. I want you to be to be happy with me. I want you to find home in me. I want to live my life for your glory. I want to live by faith, not by sight. Yes, it's my desire, Father, to walk with you. You know, I keep saying, what's wrong with the church? Why are we waiting for something that is going to happen in the future while the thing is already happening? See, the things of God begins from the, from the womb of the day as it is in fulfilling prophetic purpose in righteousness so it is in fulfilling prophetic purpose in exposing evil it always begins gradually and it increases like i always say like i said some time ago if we have to wait until the manifestation of a thing is too late 
The man of sin is at work. The Bible says the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Is at work. Is at work. In the day of the mystery of iniquity, we have to be running towards what? Great is the mystery of righteousness. <laughs> Great is the mystery of righteousness. So we yield, Lord, to you. We spend our time to seeking you. We invest our life. You see, in the economy of the kingdom, you have to invest something to get something from God. That's not legalism. You better believe it. It says, it says follow me and I will make you. <laughs> you have to make the transaction to follow before they make you. <laughs> you see, that's not legalism. And there's no trade and battle. It's not trade and battle. No. You have to give something. If you don't give your time to the things of God, they will, they will never bring you to a deeper understanding of the ways of God. No, it's not going to happen. You have, to, you have to trade your time for eternity. For eternal things. For kingdom things. When you see people, they write. They've written volumes. Are you wondering? They spend time. They give their time. They could have spent the time to doing something else. Whatever matters to you, you spend time with. It's called trading. Yes. That's spiritual transaction. You spend time. I mean, I spend time. I remember spending time in prayer. You know, hours, hours just praying. You know, before I began ministry, I spent hours praying. Just praying, praying. Sometimes I pray through the whole day. I just pray. I'm just praying. I'm just praying, seeking the face of God. I didn't know I was preparing for the future. Until one day the Lord said to me, Isaiah, you're sowing into your future. And he said to me, he said, prayer is like an investment into the future. Prayer is like depo depositing. You know, when you go to bank, you deposit money there. It's yours, but you can't go and take it because you've deposited it. You're depositing it because there's something you have in mind for the future. You deposit it. The things of God, you've got to, you've got to understand the concept, amen, of, of, the, of economy. Economy is not a worldly language. All right? It's a powerful principle that defines to us how we engage in the things of God. You know, sometimes I'm just busy in the day and I'm walking and talking and they're like, are you okay? I, what are you saying? And I say, I'm, I'm, talking to, I'm talking to God. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've, got to, you've got to keep your mind engaged in the things of God. You've got to. Or else, the Bible says, with flatteries, he will corrupt those who violate. With flatteries. <laughs> flatteries means it will come with something that sound nice, that look nice, that feel nice. And he says, yes, yes, yes. You see, the suki, the mind will be accepting it because it feels nice. Everything today is, is done via entertainment. Yes. It's that spirit of flattery. But those who know they are God. We hear you, Father. We hear your heart. We hear your mind. We prepare ourselves. Our desire is to encounter you. We want to know you. We want to live for you. We want to glorify your name. These are not conventional teachings. These are teachings that will bring us to a place of divine encounter. So continue to walk your walk in our hearts, in our life. As we go about our day-to-day -day life, help us to understand that there's something that matters to you. Even in our transaction of business, in meeting people, in relating with people, help us to understand what matters the most to you. We bless your name, Lord. As we continue this day, this weekend, may we remember what matters to you. May we know that in your presence, O oh God, there are pleasures forevermore. Yes, even at your right hand. We thank you. Thank you. Help us not to trust in ourselves to the point where we become disappointed again by our own action. Help us to depend and trust in you. I pray for all my brothers and sisters that they will trust in you. Everyone that will be watching or listening to the audios of this message, I pray that they will learn 
not to put their trust in the arm of flesh, but they will trust in you. Thank you. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ever imagine or think. Thank you, Lord, that every aspect of our faculty are being harvested for your glory. Yes. Everything that you give to us, you give to us in perfection. There's no evil in all that you created. What the devil does is it perverts the things that you've given to us. You gave us sex. Sex was good. It's still good. But the devil perverted it. You gave us beauty. He takes it. He perverts it. You give us children. He takes them. He perverts them. Every good thing that you've given to man, because we abdicate our position place, the devil takes it. He perverts it. And he uses it for his own glory. But we, we are beginning to understand what to, what, how to live life and what it means to live life in you. Thank you, Father Lord, that our life, our minds, imaginations, all of these things are good. You don't give us, you didn't create evil imagination, no. You gave them imagination. Nimrod used that imagination to build a name for himself. You brought them down. Help us, Father. That as you engage us in this brand new day, that every aspect of our life, once again, we begin to bring them to the place of divine submission and surrender to you. That you be glorified in our life. Father, we thank you. May we have the will to do your will. May we have the passion, the desire. Give us the hunger, the love for you. Because if we don't love you, we will never put all of these things. This will just be a nice message we hear. Go through one ear, come through another. <laughs> but help us to love you. Love is the beginning point. And yet it's the end of all things. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, we want to thank God this morning for another opportunity like this to bring the heart of God, the mind of God across to us. I want to believe that we have been all motivated this morning. We've been encouraged. We've been strengthened. And of course, you understand what I mean when I say be motivated. The truth will motivate us. Amen. To set our hearts on a journey for him. All right. So please, let's live our life constantly. Amen. In the ambience of his presence. Let's know that we cannot do anything of our own self. Amen. To please him. The strength, the grace to please him comes from him. So a life of total dependence, amen, in, on, on God is what we have been called into. We have to learn to totally depend on him. And when we do that, he will make his abode in us. So thank you so much, everyone. By God's grace, tomorrow we'll continue. I'm not sure what we're going to be dealing with tomorrow. We've got so many, you know, streams the Lord is speaking to us in this brand new day, but... Anyhow, we will be here tomorrow again morning. Tomorrow morning. Or I don't know what God will do in the course of the day. But anyhow, I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Tina. Thank you, uh, Sister Adioni. And of course, my dear Sister Nkumisa. God bless you, uh, ladies. God keep you. God continue to cause his good face to shine upon you. Next week, next week, uh, uh, Sunday, we are going to continue on our engaging uh, uh, um, the spirit of the age all right so we've taken two weeks two two sundays off tomorrow also we're going to be taking it off i'm just working on something and see how we can work it out but we'll see thank you so much everyone god bless you enjoy the rest of your day bye-bye